hi guys welcome back to my channel please subscribe if you're yet to like share and comment these are the items i'll be using for today's video a ruler tape measure tracing wheel pencil marker pens a push pin scissors and of course the bodies blocks okay my dear friends now you have your basic blocks and you're thinking what can i do with them in this video you will learn what you can do with your basic blocks what flat pattern making is its principles and dart manipulation so what can we do with our basic blocks you can adapt your basic blocks to create endless designs of your choice but how can you do this that's where flat pattern making comes in now let's talk about flat pattern making flat pattern making is the method you use to change your blocks into the design of your choice if we know the basic principles of flat pattern making and how to apply them we can create any design without affecting the fit of the original pattern so what are the three principles of flat pattern making they are the principle of dart manipulation, the principle of added fullness, and the principle of contouring. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating the principle of dart manipulation using this basic fitted front bodice block with the boss dart and waist dart drawn. If you have not created your bodice block, you can use the tutorials in my previous videos to create your bodice block. Links are in the description below or here. I'll be making the demonstration using the half scale version of this bodice block so that it will be easier to capture the full view on this video. So here is the half scale version of this block that I'll be using. Also the half scale block is a very useful uh, item for practicing and developing your pattern making skills. I have provided you a tutorial in case you would like to make a half scale version of your block. See the link also below. Now let's get back to the focus of this video, that manipulation. So what is dart manipulation? Dart manipulation is the process of moving a dart location to a different place on the pattern piece without affecting the fit of the original pattern. And these are some of the possible locations we can move the bus dart. So here I have a replica of this bodice block with the same bus dart as shown. And this bus dart can be moved around to the underarm at bust level can be moved to the mid arm hole, shoulder tip, mid shoulder, the mid neck, the center front neck, the center front at bust level, the center front waist, can be moved into the waist dart, the side waist, the side seam, as well as the possibility of moving both the bust and the waist dart to any location as desired. In other words, the darts can be moved around the apex and the garment will still have the same fit. In this video, I will move the bust dart into two different locations, the mid shoulder and the waist dart. So how can we do this? We can achieve this using two different methods. One of the methods is the slash and spread method and the other method is the pivot method i will demonstrate the slash and spread technique of moving the bust dart into the waist dart first so to do that first we need to trace out a copy of this bodice block so here i have traced out this bodice block onto a fresh pattern paper as you can see this is a replica of what i have here now what we're going to do is to slash the center line of the waist dart all the way up to the boss point but not through the boss point so we'll go ahead and cut right through up to the boss point 
but not through it okay like so the next step is to close the boss dart so in doing that the waist that has now widened because we've now transferred the boss dart into the waist dart we can go ahead and trace this out onto a fresh pattern paper incorporating this dart or we can also just add paper underneath like so next thing is we draw a new center line so we take the midway point of this new dart and then draw the center line up to the boss point Now, next we fold the dart legs. So with the dart folded and in the cupped 3D position, we just drew this waistline. And then trace over to get the shape. Okay, having done that, now we can go ahead and cut it out. And of course, remember to come down and remark the dart legs. So you can just come down by whatever amount you already had on your original block and remark your dart legs. So the boss dart has now been transferred into the waist dart and this is a one dart block next we are going to move the bust dart to the mid shoulder again i've traced out a copy of the bodice block up to the waist as well now we'll get the center point of the shoulder so measure your center point and then mark that center point of the shoulder now we'll draw a guideline from that center point to the bust point, like so. The next step is to slash this line, this guideline, all the way up to the bust point, but not through the bust point. So having slashed this center line all the way to the bust point but not through it we'll go ahead and close this bust dart we can now go ahead and trace this onto a fresh pattern paper or just add paper underneath to complete the dart shape now we've added the paper we'll go ahead as well and take the center point of the new dart and draw a line to the center point so we draw a line to the bust point. Again, we also take the, so we take the same distance that we have on here and then mark that position. And with that, we can now draw the dark legs. Now one more thing before we finish off this, we need to close these dark legs in order to true the shoulder line. Also we trace across just to get the correct shape of it. So having got that now, we'll go ahead and cut it out. I 
Having done that, we have now succeeded in transferring the bust dart to the shoulder. Now I'm going to show you the pivot method. For the pivot method, I'll be using this front bodice which ends at the waist. So on a fresh pattern paper, we'll place this and then we we'll use a push pin for our pivotal point which is the bust point. Now we're going to go ahead and label the dart legs. We'll label upper part, let's label that as A. Let's label the lower part of the bust dart as B. And I've created these guidelines there. And then we're going to label the center point of the waist dart as C. We also go ahead and mark to the left of the center point, we're going to mark where the waist dart, the original waist dart ends. Okay, having done that now, we'll go ahead and trace all the way starting from point A. We're going to trace all around to point C. Now we've reached point C, we're going to pivot this pattern, the block pattern, we're going to pivot it all the way so that the lower dart leg meets the upper dart leg and that way we'll be closing that bust dart. So let's go ahead and do that, making sure that the push pin remains in place. Then we'll go ahead and trace again all the way from this dart um, point A to meet our original dart point C. So that center, the center of the waist. Also remember to mark the original waist that position. Okay, having done that now, We'll remove this and this is what we have so just a little explanation of what we now have here from this point to this point is our original waist that and from this to this so this is we can also say this is point C is our original waist that and this space we have here is the bust that which has now been manipulated into the waist dart again just like we did before we take the midway point of this new dart okay, having done that we're going to rule all the way from that pivotal point which is the boss point rule a line And from there, we we'll mark our bust dart starting point, just like we have, just like we have on here. So this same distance that we have here, we're going to mark that. And then from there, we will rule up to this original waist dart, not not at this, because if we do this, we'll be removing the waist dart. So. We have the original waist dart here, so we're going to rule all the way up to the now. Next, we'll go ahead and fold the dart legs like so. And then we threw the waistline as well. Okay, so 
here I have it cut out already. Next, I'm going to show you how to move the bust dart to the mid shoulder using the pivot metal. Again, you get a fresh piece of pattern paper and place the block onto it just like we did previously. We're going to use a push pin to hold it in position. Now remember that we're moving the bust dart into the shoulder dart. Now that we've held it in position, we'll go ahead again and label the uh, bust dart legs. So let's call this upper bust dart leg, let's call that point A. And then the lower we'll call point B. Next, we mark the mid shoulder and let's call this point point C. Now we're going to trace from the shoulder point, this point C, all the way up until we get to the lower dart leg. And remember also to mark the waist dart position there. So let's go ahead and trace that right through. So we carry on tracing up to point B and we stop. Now with the push pin, making sure that it's in holding it in position, we're now going to pivot the upper that leg to the original position where the lower that leg is in order to close the bust that. Having done this now, we'll go ahead and carry on tracing. up until we get back to the middle point of the shoulder and we stop. So having done this, we can now remove this. So this distance that we have here now is the bust that which has been closed has now been transferred into the shoulder as a shoulder that. Now let's go ahead and complete this. So this is our waist that let's just draw the waist that into position and of course just like we usually do make sure that you take the same measurement that you have here and then we draw the dart legs now we're also going to go ahead to get the middle point of this new dart space there so we measure it and get the midpoint. I will also go ahead and draw from that midpoint all the way to the bust point. Again, measure the same distance that we originally had here. Okay, we measure that same distance. And then we draw the dart legs. So having drawn this center line and the dart legs, we're now going to fold the dart legs. And we trace across to get the correct shape of the of the dart finishing. Okay, and there we have it. We could choose to leave this as a curved line, or we could choose to trim it and draw straighten out the line as desired, whichever you choose. Okay, just like so. Okay, now that we have it, we can go ahead and cut it out as well. So here I have the bust that has been manipulated into the shoulder that. 
so I have a two that block with the shoulder that and the waist that so here are the body blocks that have been created using the slash and spread method and also this one's using the pivot method so we have now completed the dark manipulation and achieved the one that block with the one waist that and also the two that block with the shoulder and waist that and as you can see if i place them on each other we practically have about the same so it hasn't made a difference whatever method was used to um, achieve the that manipulation so you can see these two as well about the same i also went ahead and cut this out on manila card as i'll be using them as starting point for flat pattern making depending on the design i'm creating so i have all of them cut out on manila card so that it will be easy for me to trace out i encourage you to go ahead and create yours ready for all the amazing flat pattern making designs i'll be sharing with you in my future videos thank you for watching till i see you in my next video Bye for now.